We will begin in a seated position. You can come cross-legged or whatever works, finding a nice grounded, rooted seat, still sitting up nice and tall, relaxing your arms down in your lap, pulling your chin gently towards your chest. Again, imagine that beautiful filament lifting you up by the crown of your head, lengthening through your spine. And if you'd like, take a nice deep, hill, deep inhale through your mouth, or your nose rather, exhale it through your mouth, and just let it go. Sometimes we just need to sigh out the day, get rid of your Monday, get rid of all the hours of CNN that you may or may not have had on in the background while you were doing other things today. Let it go. And then just watch your breath for a moment. Notice what it does. Notice how deeply or shallowly you're breathing. Notice if you're out of breath, if you rushed to get to your mat. Notice your mental state. We've had a few days of rain here and that always impacts me. Sometimes I find myself like in a really kind of grouchy mood and then it will dawn on me that the sun hasn't been out and I'm seriously impacted by a lack of solar power. So sometimes it's good to just recognize that. I was wondering why I was so grouchy and grumpy and I realized that was it. And then I was like, okay, I can deal with that. The sun will come out and there's nothing else to make me grouchy and grumpy. So let me just let go of that. Notice your physical state. Notice if you're holding any tension anywhere. If you did anything maybe this week, if you're aching anywhere, if you slept funny, if you were sitting at a desk all day, just kind of take stock. And then begin to focus on the breath, inhaling through the nose and exhaling through the nose. If your breath hasn't already become steady, see if you can regulate, regulate that. Inhaling and exhaling. Ideally, throughout the practice, always coming back to that breath pattern. Using it to help hold your balance. Using it as you flow through. Inhale and exhale. Always drawing in energy, drawing in strength, drawing in positivity, and exhaling tension, exhaling stress, exhaling negativity. If you'd like to set an intention for your practice, you can do that now. If you'd like to dedicate your practice and send the energy you're creating out to a particular person, or the universe at large, or a group of people, you can do that. Or if it's to help heal you and you want to direct that energy inward, you can do that. And let's take an inhale as you extend those arms up overhead, interlacing the fingers, pressing them away, and just bending side to side, stretching the spine laterally a couple of times each direction. And release that and drop your head down towards your chest and roll your head ear to shoulder and ear to shoulder, going one direction, going the other direction couple of times. And then if you want, making full circles, but remember we never want to press our head back. We don't want to compress our back vertebrae. So if it feels good to move your head in a circle, it really isn't a circle. It's sort of still more like a half moon. And do that a couple of times each direction. Maybe you need to pause somewhere to give it a little bit of an extra stretch. Especially if you've been sitting at a computer all day. 
make sure you kind of even that out and then bring yourself back to center. And then turn your head as if to say no really slowly over one shoulder, over the other shoulder. Again, not forcing it, but just pressing it gently with the strength of your muscles and your neck. You don't ever want to force our neck. And make your way back to center. And let's come over onto our hands and knees. Hands under shoulders, knees under hips. Let's curl the toes under and stretch the hands out and just come into puppy posture for a minute. You get a really nice full body stretch. So you're really pressing into your hands so that they're stuck. Imagine they're super glued to the mat. And then pull back like you're trying to get your hips to your heels. And that should create a nice stretch through your spine. Just let your head go. It may or may not touch the mat. That doesn't really matter. You just don't want to be holding it up. Good. And then release that into child's pose. Go ahead and sit back on your heels. You can leave your, leave your arms outstretched or you can bring them by your side either way. And just take a couple of breaths into the back body. Always remembering you can come and find child pose anytime you need it in the practice. It's always your option to just take a break. And then come back up onto your hands and knees when you're ready. Hands under shoulders, knees under hips. Let's press down into cow pose and hold that for a moment. So you're still pulling in your belly because we are putting an arch in our spine here, right? So we don't want to over-exaggerate that. So you don't want to just drop into it. It's really active. You're pushing the pelvis down, but you're still pulling the belly button in. And then you're pulling the shoulders back, lifting the chest, and then the gaze just goes forward again, because we don't want to press the neck backwards, so we're not trying to look at the ceiling. Holding here and taking a couple of breaths. Notice how this feels. And then transitioning this to cat, pulling the pelvis under. Pulling the belly button up, pressing into the hands, expanding the shoulder blades, and then dropping the head down so your chin is coming towards your chest. You're looking at your belly button. Holding here for a couple of breaths. And one more time. Next time you inhale, slowly transition this back to cat. And when you get there, hold it for a couple of breaths. Pull the shoulders back. Think about lifting the chest. If you're trying to sort of press the chest forward as you press the pelvis down. But you should feel compression or pain in that low back. And then next time you exhale, pull the tailbone under and arch up one more time into that cat position. Take a couple of deep breaths. And bring that back to neutral, so your belly is pulling in, shoulders are pulling down and back, finding that long, more or less neutral spine. Our neutral, or neutral, I should say, more or less flat. When we're in neutral, we still usually have a little bit of a curve in our spine, but most of us should not have a dramatic curve. So it's somewhat easier to find here than when we're standing. So kind of getting used to it here can be helpful for when you're in other positions. We're going to come up to plank. Anytime we do plank, I have a feeling that we'll be doing a lot of planks tonight. It is only a feeling because y'all know I make this up as we go. <laughs> but I have a prediction we're going to do a lot of planks. So at any point, if you want to modify, the best thing to do is come up into full plank and then drop down to your knees from there. That's going to put your knees in the right position to modify your plank. If this bothers your hands or your wrists, I should say, rather, some people find that coming onto your fists makes it a little bit easier on your wrists. And if that's still too much, you can almost always come down to forearms. Sometimes it's going to be kind of hard to be on your forearms, depending on what we're doing. But just, you know, adjust as you need. If you're happy doing full plank, come on up to your full plank. If you were holding it that whole time, good on you. Congratulations. No shame in that. We're going to hold this for a couple more seconds. Again, that neutral spine. So we definitely don't want to drop hips here. You don't really want to push your hips up because you're not getting the full benefit. Push up into down dog. Jogging through here. Bending one knee, bending the other knee. So you're stretching one heel towards the floor, starting to work out the kinks and those hamstrings. 
So I think, I can't see who might have joined, but all of you who were on when I started have been with me for a while. So I want you to really focus on your, on your down dogs because we'll be doing a lot of them tonight. Down dogs is one of those postures that's like kind of relatively easy, right? Like, you know, it's not the easy of, of postures to hold, but I mean, in terms of getting into it, like all of you can get into down dog. The issue I sometimes see is that a lot of people put a lot of pressure on their joints of their shoulders specifically, I should say, in down dogs. Elbows too, to a certain extent. So we never roll our shoulders by our ears, but for some reason in down dog, what we like to do is push our chest towards our thighs. And then that puts lots of pressure on our shoulders and it stretches the ligaments and tendons in not such a good way. And they don't recover. If you overstretch them, you're in a world of hurt. So if you do yoga for a lot of years and you're always trying to extend those arms, lock the elbows and press towards your legs, you're gonna hurt your shoulders. Instead, I'd rather you just release, relax, let the head go, soften your down dog a little bit, roll your shoulders down and out so you really feel the muscles of your back engage, put a tiny, tiny micro bend in your elbows so you're not locking, and now you should have loads of air between your ears and your shoulders. It should also feel a lot harder to do because you're using muscles in a way that you aren't when you're kind of just collapsing into your shoulders. Now you're building strength in your back, in your shoulders, in your arms, as opposed to relying on the tendons and ligaments of your joints, which it's not a good look. Come back out to plank. That was my down dog lecture for you. I used to do workshops when I was in DC on joint health because I one teacher used to say, your joints are more precious than diamonds, and I tend to agree. And I would just often see people really relying on their joints rather than working to develop the muscles. Press back up, downward facing dog. Rolling the shoulders away. Releasing the head, make sure it's loose. And again, coming out into your plank one last time. Lower this down to that modified plank. I really should have called this modified on your forearms. And I mean, it isn't particularly, it's just a, a different version of plank. So you're still in full lifted plank unless you want to be on your knees. But now you're on your forearms. Looking in between your arms. Bend your knees, tap the mat, and lift back up. And bend and tap, and lift back up. And three, and two, last one, and then lower this all the way down. Good, slide the hands out, coming up into your sphinx. So what's nice about a sphinx is you've got that extended spine, but you're really supported here in your forearm. So if ever you are suffering from any low back pain, this is always a nice way to modify your cobras or up dogs. And then just nod your head, yes and no, a couple of times. Again, without going too far back. Turn your head side to side a couple of times, just like we did at the beginning, making sure that's nice and loose. Good, and lower that down. Press back up into that forearm plank. Take this to a side. I'm gonna go right side, it doesn't matter, you decide. Again, you can drop the knee or you can leave the leg lifted for that fuller, harder version. Extending the left arm straight up, push the hips up. Good, reach that arm overhead and if you want, lift up the opposite leg. <laughs> I shouldn't say opposite. The only leg you can lift up, the leg that is not currently supporting the entire weight of your body, lift that leg up. Take a couple of deep breaths. Option here to crunch in, knee to elbow, and extend out. Crunch in, knee to elbow, and extend, getting some oblique work. Three more. Two more. The last one. Lower the leg. Come on back to your plank and then release that down onto the mat. Now slide in the hands back underneath the shoulder, hug the elbows to the ribs, press the feet into the mat, squeeze the glutes, press the pelvic bone into the mat and lift up to your cobra. You can come to baby cobra or you can come higher but hips are on the mat, shoulders are down and back. Squeeze those glutes, protect the back. Take a couple of breaths here. This should feel hard, 
This shouldn't be like relaxing because <laughs> you're lifting, lifting, lifting. And release that down. Move the hands back so you can come back to that plank position. Lifting up into your plank. This time bending one knee and then the other knee. Bend one knee and then the other knee. Squeezing the belly button. Plank works shoulders, but it super, super works the core. That's why I suspected we'd be doing a lot of planks today because I'm doing very core focused today. That much I know. Pivot onto your opposite side. I'm coming onto my left, you decide. Option, so that hand, if you need that support of your top hand, it can always stay in the mat. You can also bend the bottom knee, or if you want, reach the arm up. If you want, you can even turn your gaze to look at it. And then reaching it overhead, you should feel a nice stretch. Lift the top leg. And then only if you want, bring it in for six and extend. So this is nice and controlled. It's not super fast. And three. And two. Last one. Pivot back around, coming back to that forearm plank, holding it for a couple seconds. Breathing. And lowering that down. Now slide the hands back, unless you don't want to do up dog, you can do cobra again. If you have up dog in your practice or you want to work on it, slide your hands that come just about to like your top rib. So press the hands to the mat, still hugging the elbows into the sides, push into the hands, and it's active. So it's a lot like when I said in sphinx and in our cat or our cow position, you're pulling your shoulders back. You're still being drawn up by that invisible filament and you're not dropping in your hips because that's going to hurt your low back. And then speaking of our shoulders, if you lock your elbows here, you'll also tend to pop your shoulders up. Put a little tiny micro bend in your elbows, pull those shoulders down away from the ears. And oh my gosh, if you're not shaking now, you have superhuman strength. It's super hard to do this well. Release that down and push up and back, come to child's pose. Up dog feels easy when you drop in your hips, you lock your elbows. Because at that point, the joints are supporting you. If you think of locked elbows, it's like a steel rod, right? Your arm becomes very, very strong. If you put a tiny micro bend in it, now the muscles have to work. And if your hips are just dropping, you're not putting forth any effort. If you're lifting up, pressing and extending that spine, imagining from the tailbone to the crown of the head lengthening, you have to work a lot harder. All right, curl those toes under, push up, downward facing dog, pressing heels into the mat, rolling the shoulders away from the ear, let the head go. And then walk your feet towards the top of the mat, just hanging over for a moment, shaking it out. Maybe a little bit of a bend in the knees so you're really releasing the spine. Shake out the arms, maybe twisting. Let it go, let it go, let it go. Bend your knees, let your hips drop and roll up one vertebra at a time. Till you come to standing. And then let's roll down that. So drop your chin towards your chest, rounding over, just like we did before, pulling the belly button in. Your ribs collapse over each other, you fold over, coming all the way down, hanging with slightly bent knees. And then straighten your legs without locking your knees. Slide your hands up your shins, finding Ardha Uttanasana. So it's that same neutral spine position. We're not arched up into cat and we're not dipped down into cow. We should be in neutral. Hands should be either on shins thighs are hanging in space but as always not pushing on our knees and it's super easy to lock your knees here so try to avoid doing that and you're looking at the floor in front of you so that your neck is in neutral so now keeping the legs straight go ahead and release all the way down and now see if you can press all the way to standing coming through Ardha Uttanasana pushing through your feet Extending all the way up, inhaling, growing tall, lifting up on tiptoes, pulling shoulders down away from the ears. Pressing the palms together, and the next time you exhale, lowering heels and lowering palms.
Oh, right, it was sort of an extended warm up. All right, coming to the top of the mat if you're not there already. Feet right underneath your hips. So not too wide. You can have them more narrow if you prefer. Shoulders down away from the ears. Make sure you're not holding any tension in your shoulders. Chin towards chest. Find that focal point in front of you. Reconnect with your breath. Inhaling through the nose. Exhaling through the nose. Next time you inhale, extending those arms upwards. As you exhale, hinging forward, release. As you inhale, flat back, Ardha Gajanasana, where we just were. Exhale, hands to the mat. Right foot steps back, followed by left foot coming to plank. Lowering down, so you can come all the way to the mat, or you can hover in your chaturanga, and then lift up to your cobra or your up dog. Try not to lock those elbows, pressing back to down dog. Holding here for a couple of breaths. And then swing the right leg up, swing it forward, plant it down, followed by the left forward fold. Halfway, Ardha Uttanasana, release Uttanasana, and then extending all the way up to standing. And Tadasana. Inhale up. Exhale forward. Inhale, flat back lift. Exhale, release. Inhale, left foot steps back, followed by right. Lowering down all the way to the mat, up to cobra or chaturanga, up to up dog. Exhale, press back, down dog. Holding here, bend the elbows a little teeny bit, pressing into the hands, driving the heels towards the mat. Think about shooting your tailbone up to the ceiling, rather than that notion of pressing your chest to your legs. Extend the left leg up, Swing it forward, plant it down, followed by the right, forward fold. Inhale, coming all the way up. And exhale, back to one. Inhale up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, flat back lift. Exhale, release, step the right foot back, let that knee come down to the mat as you rise up on the inhale, opening chest and shoulders, and on the exhale, hands refine the mat. Step the left foot back, plank. You're a version of vinyasa. You can also skip and go straight to down dog if you prefer. Extend the left leg up, bend that, I mean, sorry, right leg up, bend the right knee, drop it towards the left side, stacking right hip on top of left. Hold there for a moment. So the weight of your leg is dropping away, and that's what's creating that stretch through your pelvis and your hip. If you've been sitting all day, I feel this in the morning particularly when I've been lying all night, but if you've been sitting all day, this might be a really tight area, so let gravity help you out here. Hang out there for a moment. Come back to center, swing that leg all the way forward, followed by the left forward fold. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, forward fold, and inhale all the way up. Exhale, hands to heart center. And again, inhale up, exhale, fold, flat back as you go down, then you round, inhale, Ardha Uttanasana, exhale, release. Stepping the left foot back this time, releasing that foot down onto the mat, inhale as you open up, exhale, hands find the mat, stepping the right foot back, plank, chaturanga, or you just skip it, go right to your down dog. Everybody meeting there when you're there, extend the left leg. Bend the left knee, dropping it to the opposite side. The left hip on right, holding there for a few breaths. Letting gravity do the work. Maybe feel different parts moving, adjusting. I hear little snaps, crackles, and pops depending on where different positions I'm holding. Just the body finding its place. And come back to center. Swing that leg all the way through. Plant it down, forward fold. Inhale, halfway up. Exhale, release. Inhale, rising all the way up. And exhale, back to one. All right, we're going to do a round of Surya so Namaskar B. We're going to start building onto this and adding some standing postures. So, 
as always. I am migrating. When you're ready, inhaling into chair pose. You can also bring hands to heart center if it's better on your back or shoulders rather than having your arms lifted. Make sure you're sitting back, knees over ankles rather than weight forward. It's a good thing to do to kind of wiggle your toes and make sure that your weight is in your heels. As we sit here, it should be your quads and your glutes firing up, not so much your knees aching. And forward fold, straighten the legs, inhale, flat back lift, exhale relief. So for the remainder of these, it is always your option. I will call right foot, left foot, and I will try to remember to alternate, or you can hop two feet back, making it more um, power Ashtanga style, your option. If you're gonna um, step back, step right followed by left. Otherwise, you bend your knees, plant your hands, and jump back to plank. Once everyone's in plank, hold it here for a moment. So, that fun thing we did a couple weeks ago where we did one push-up each time, we're going to do that again. So, obviously it's an option, but if you would like to do that, it's one push-up, exhale to press back up, and then the next time you go ahead to your vinyasa and find yourself in downward facing dog. Breathing here. Extend the right leg up. Lifting and pushing away. This should give you a little bit of an extra stretch on that left side. Three hinges forward, knee to chest, and hold it. And kick back up. Again, knee to chest, but hold and hover. And kick back up. Knee to chest and hover. And kick back up. This time, plant that foot down, rising up to your high lunge. So back knee is lifted. We're going nice and low in our front leg. Hands at heart center. Hands could come to the thigh if you wanted some extra support. Or you could raise those arms up overhead. You could begin to start to back bend as you open the chest towards the ceiling. Next time you exhale, hands find the mat. Step the right foot back. No push up this time, just chaturanga. Just going to go right onto the other side. Once you get to your down dog, extend your left leg and hold it. Push that heel away. Feel a stretch in your right. And then slow hinges forward, knee to chest, hovering out over the hands. And press up. And again, knee to chest. And hover. And extend up. And again, knee to chest and hover and extend up. This time plant that foot down, rising up into your high lunge. You choose your arm position. It's slightly easier to look in front of you, slightly harder to bring the gaze upwards on any of these poses. Next time you exhale, hands find the mat, step that foot back, chaturanga, back to down dog. And then stepping right foot forward followed by left or bending your knees and hopping two feet forward to the top of the mat, rising up into chair, Utkatasana. Holding here, inhale and exhale. Making sure, as always, it's that same idea of a neutral spine. If you arch your back, sticking your bottom out, you put a lot of pressure and you'll notice your belly gets really soft. Pull the belly in, lengthen the spine, now your core has to work. Forward fold. Inhale, flat back lift. Exhale, release. Stepping left foot back or hopping two foot back to plank. Now one push up and up. And then chaturanga to your down dog. As always, coming to child's pose if you need. Actually, I say that. Let's come to child's pose. Drop down to your knees and release your head to the mat. And your shoulders did a lot, so we can give them a break for a second. Good, now reaching those hands out, coming back to your down dog. Extend the right leg up, swing it forward, plant it down, Virabhadrasana once. You pivot the right, the back foot, the left foot, you rise up, hand positions are the same, they can come to thigh, come to chest, or they can extend. What's more important is that we keep those hips forward, maybe bring that gaze up, maybe opening chest towards the ceiling. Transitioning this, Virabhadrasana two, Shoulder blades pulling together, lifting nice and tall through here. Gaze is out over the front hand. 
and we're going to flow through between our side angle bend and our reverse warrior. So right arm is going to come across the right thigh to our side angle bend, and then left arm flips behind the back, reverse warrior. So notice the bottom half of your body is not moving, it's just the top half. Third time, reversing that, and then coming back to warrior two. Gaze out over that front hand, pressing into the pinky edge of that back foot. And then cartwheel out of the stepping the right foot back. Just go ahead and do your chaturanga. Working your way to your down dog. Extend the left leg up. Same thing other side. Swing it forward. Plant it. Pivot the back foot. Rising up. Virabhadrasana one on this side. If at any point your arms or shoulders have had it, just bring your arms down. That is fine. They might need a break. If you want, raise them up, but make sure you're pulling shoulders down away from the ears. Opening this out, warrior two. Standing nice and tall through center. It's like you've got someone pulling you back and pulling you forward, so you end up right in the middle. Staying nice and lifted. Three times, side angle bend. Reverse the warrior. With the breath, side angle bend. You could be moving slower or faster than me. Third time, after you reverse that warrior, find yourself back to your warrior two. Pressing into that pinky edge, that's going to protect this knee. If you collapse onto that right back toe, you tend to kind of put a lot of tension here. If you're actively pushing away, you engage the muscles of your leg and that protects the joint. And with the front, you just want to, don't want to be tracking out over the toes. You want to try to avoid going in or out. You want to have it right over the ankle. Cartwheel out of this, hand to the mat. Left foot steps back, chaturanga. Working your way to your down dog. Stepping left foot forward, followed by right, or hopping two feet forward. Forward fold. Bending the knees, rising up into chair. Sitting back, finding chairs. So we're going to do one more round each side. So two more full rounds. So those of you stepping back, you'll step one more time right, one more time left. And forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, release. Hands to the mat. Option to hop or step right followed by left. Plank, one push up. Exhale up. Second time, chaturanga. Coming to down dog. Heels towards the mat, palms towards the mat, shoulders away from ears, hip bones to the sky. And the right leg extends up. Hinging forward, hovering, holding, and now that lower and lifting. So the knee drops to the mat, and then we arch up like we're trying to get away from the flame. Lowering down and pressing up. Lowering down and pressing up. Kick back again to the three-legged down dog. And this time, swing it forward, plant it down, warrior one. Transitioning this to warrior two. Staying nice and lifted here. Good, coming to your side angle bend, arm across the thigh. So the opposite arm can stay here on the hip, which can be helpful in keeping the chest open. You can bring a hand behind the head. And that's even more helpful because you can press your head, your head into your hands and open that up. If you want, extend that top arm. Now, if you're nice and low, nice and bent in this knee, and you can easily reach a block or the mat, you can certainly do that. But what we don't want to see is this sort of weird shape just so that you can touch the floor. You still want to be between two panes of glass. And the hand can be really on either side. Some people like to press the arm against the thigh here. Equally, you can press the thigh against the arm. Either way is going to open your hips. Good. Pressing back up. Warrior two. Pivot. Face the front of the mat. Power lunge. We're just going to come into warrior three. Launching up. Arms extend out in front of us. Left foot's pushing away. Arms are reaching forward. 
We're going to crunch in, pulling arms into knee five times. So knee comes in, arms come in, and we extend. And again, in, making sure you maintain that balance. And three, inhale out, and two, inhale out, last one. Step that foot down, high lunge. Coming to a twist, hands to heart center, bringing left elbow against the right thigh, turning to the right, looking up towards the ceiling, making sure knee is over ankle, bringing that right shoulder towards the sky, and bring those hands down to the mat, step the right foot back, chaturanga, working your way to your down dog. Left leg extends, three-legged down dog, hinge forward and hover, lower down to the mat, and press back up, lower down, and press back up. Last time, lift back up, kick back to your three-legged down dog, step that foot forward, veer just the one on the side. Next time you exhale, transition to your warrior two. Guerrero dos. Gazing out over that front hand and then coming to your deeper side angle. So again, right here is perfectly fine. Bringing the gaze up, maybe you extend that arm. It could also reach overhead like we did before. And that would be fine. And if you want to take it lower, you can take it lower. But make sure that right shoulder is still towards the ceiling. That's my block to your friend, if you could come to here. And then when you're ready, pressing yourself up, pivoting towards the front of the mat, power lunge. And then when you're ready, stepping forward, right leg extends back, arms extend forward. Inhale as you exhale, crunch it in. Inhale, extend. Exhale, crunch it in. Inhale, extend. And three and two, last one, extend, step into that high lunge, Woo. almost lost my balance, bring your hands to heart center, twisting that right elbow against the left thigh, looking up towards the ceiling, breathing into that twist, good, bring the hands down to the mat, Step that left foot back, chaturanga, to your down dog. One more round to go. You can do it. And bending the knees, hopping forward to the top of the mat, letting yourself hang, rising up into chair, utkatasana, sitting nice and low. Chest lifting, and forward fold. Inhale, flat back lift, exhale release. Stepping left foot back, followed by right, or hopping two feet back. We're gonna do a few more push-ups here. So, I'm gonna go ahead and separate my hands a little wider. That is an option. And we're gonna do five push-ups. You can drop to knees for these if you want, and you can also just make them like baby push-ups. When you're ready, we're gonna go for five, four, three, two, last one. If you move your hands out like me, walk them back to the center, not to the center, but normal position under your shoulders. Do one push up here, whoa, and then chaturanga. Can you hover in your chaturanga for a second? Then flip the feet and then press up to your up dog. And press back to down dog. Whew. I'm feeling that too, y'all. Don't you worry. Now, when you start to get tired, that's when it's easy to collapse into your shoulders. So this is when you really need to pay attention. Make sure you're not getting lazy because your arms are getting tired. If you are, it's better to come out of it and just take a break in child's pose. No shame in that. When you're ready, right leg swings up, swings forward, warrior one. Transitioning to warrior two. Let's do one reverse warrior, left hand behind the back. Open 
bring that right arm up. All right, since I know there's some fans in the room, and since we're pretty warm, we can do a, a bird of paradise this time for anyone who wants. So coming back to warrior two, you want to be in a really deep warrior two. That's going to help you as you move through this. So same option, coming to side angle bend. Those of you who just want to hang on side angle bend, you're fine. You can take that down deeper. You can also, even if you don't want to work on bird of paradise, work on your bind, where you bring that right arm under. But the idea is to still stay really open. So even if you can't reach your hands, you could take a t-shirt, a washcloth, a belt, because what we don't want is this, right? And that's not such a great look. You still want to stay open, and your arms may or, not be, may or may not be long enough for that. From here, if you want to come into Bird of Paradise, you're going to bring that left foot forward. The left foot becomes the new standing foot. As you rise up, on it, you've got to be bound. So even if you're not holding hands, this is when you've got to have something to connect or this just doesn't work. And then if you want, see if you can extend that leg. Wherever you are is fine. If you're in your bird of paradise, see if you can somewhat gracefully come back out of it. See if you can step that foot back, find your um, bound side angle bend, and then can you press back up, everybody, into warrior. Straighten the front leg, hinge forward, reaching away, finding triangle, right arm dangles. Let's not plant it on anything, we just let it hang. Turn the head and look towards that opposite side. Imagine I come around and I poke you in your left rib here, pull that down. It tends to like to kind of arch out. The idea in triangles, both waistlines are the same length. And press yourself up. Cartwheel down out of this. Step the right foot back. Coming to side plank on your right. Right hand comes to the middle of the mat. Pivot over. Same option, right knee can drop. Left arm can reach straight up. It can reach over. Left leg can lift. And then if you want, just like we did before, knee to elbow, and extend. Five, extend, four, three, two, last one. Bring that hand to the mat, pivot around, chaturanga, up dog or cobra, down dog. Left leg extends up, swings forward, warrior one on this side. The challenge is see if you can get into it in one breath, one move fluidly. Open this up, warrior two. So again, get that nice deep bend, which for me always means moving my right foot back, or the back foot back, I should say. Deep bend without tracking out over toes. Then find whatever version of side angle bend you want. If you're just working hand on arm on thigh, hand on block. If you're working on the bind and you've got something back here, to hold, that's great. You've got to bind in order to get to um, Bird of Paradise, but it doesn't have to be your hands. Like I said, sometimes a washcloth is enough. I'm going to show you. You just hang out there in your side angle bend. We happen to be right by my linen closet. I'm going to show you what that looks like. We're going to do a modified version this time. So here I am in my assisted bind. We step the right foot forward. That becomes our new standing foot. We rise up and we extend the left leg. And I've given myself like six inches here to connect my hands, which is usually enough. You don't usually need a whole yoga strap. Holding for a moment, wherever you are. Those of you in Bird of Paradise, Step that foot back down. Step the right foot back again. Everybody who's down there, press yourself up, warrior two. Straight the front leg, triangle, hinging forward. Release the left arm. Bring that right arm up. Pressing up, we didn't do reverse warrior last time, I don't think, I feel like I missed that. So let's come to reverse warrior. So bend that knee again. 
Somehow I feel like I missed one reverse warrior. Good, cartwheel around, hands to the mat, stepping back, plank, on to the left. Left hand comes to the middle, flipping over to your left plank, picking whatever arm position you want, option to lift that top leg, option to crunch it in for six, five, four, three, two, and one, flipping back around, back to plank, chaturanga, working your way to your down dog. Hopping two feet forward or stepping left followed by right, forward fold. Inhale, rising up into chair, hands at heart center. Sitting super, super, super low in your chair. In fact, come to half chair. So your arms extend and you actually bring your chest down to your thighs to see how far back you can sit. Then see if you can keep your knees the same amount of bent and bring your chest up. And we're gonna twist, bringing right elbow to the thigh or binding against the thigh turning and looking towards the ceiling. Coming back to center, sitting low, chest is lifted to the other side. You don't need to lock, you don't need to bind your elbow against your thigh, you can just be on top. It's better if you're really bent over, you want to twist here. Coming back to center, full chair, arms extending, sitting nice and low and forward fold and hang. Go ahead and straighten your legs, hold on to your toes. Pull yourself downwards. Release that, sliding up, halfway lift, flat back. Exhale, release. Inhale, coming all the way up and exhale. Hands at heart center. Oh, wow. That was, I'm sweating. <laughs> Inhale up. Exhale, forward fold. Bend the knees, bring the hands to the mat, step or hop your feet back. Come into one last plank. Belly button in. Looking right in between your hands. Holding here. Five more seconds. And drop down to knees and go ahead and spin your legs around. Coming to a sitting position. Extend the legs long. Inhale up. Exhale forward fold. And just hang for a moment. Rising back up. Go ahead and sit here. And we're going to lift one leg. Again, this is another time. Washcloth might help or belt. Or, if you can, lift one leg. See if you can walk up that leg, pulling it towards you without collapsing over, right? See if you can sit nice and tall. Flex and point that foot. So if the leg is lower, that's fine. If it's being cradled in a t-shirt, a yoga strap, Bring that knee in and cradle your leg and just give yourself a little bit of a rock. Good. Place that leg down. Other leg lifts up and extends. Shoulders still pulling down and back. Chest still lifted. Pointing and flexing that foot. Rolling it around. And maybe you're here. You decide. Bend that knee, bring it in, and rock that hip. Take that left foot, cross it over the right, sit up nice and tall. Hug that knee, bring the left arm behind the body, squeezing that knee and twist around, opening that left shoulder back. If, it's, if you want, you can bring that arm over if you need more of a stretch. The idea is twisting the spine though, right? So we don't want to lean back or lean forward. You want to sit tall. 
Just like with before, there is a bind here. You can reach that arm through. You can take the other hand and bring it back. Some people are just super excited by binds. I don't know. I'd rather see a nice stretchy spine. All right, release that. Switch sides, right leg crosses, sit up nice and tall. Right hand comes behind, left arm hugs the knee. And then only if you want, left arm comes all the way over, twisting more deeply, pulling that right shoulder back. And then again, only if you want, bring the left arm through. This does make you not lean into your hand, right? So if you're doing this, you can force yourself to be balanced by taking your hand off. And you can also just grab hold of yourself. Like some, if you can't reach all the way around, you can just grab your hip. And release that. Extend your arms out in front of you. Pull the belly button in. And as slowly as you possibly can, lower yourself all the way down. Stretch the arms overhead. Take an inhale. As you exhale, roll yourself up. Also challenge you this slowly. It's very Halloween. We're like rising from the dead, right? And then stretch forward. If rising slowly did not work for you, go quickly. It's way easier to do it quickly with the breath. Inhale, exhale, but see if you can roll back really slowly. Pull that belly button in, shoulders down away from the ears. See if you can release one vertebra at a time. Take an inhale, exhale, either roll up quickly with momentum or rising like a mummy from the tomb. Stretching forward. Inhale and use the exhale to roll back. We're going to do one more. I kind of got over like a little carried away with the sun citations, so we don't have much time for Pilates. I know you're devastated. Inhale, exhale, but never fear. We were doing ab work. Plenty of ab work. And then last time, again, as slowly as you can, releasing down into the mat. Hug both knees into your chest once you get down there. Give yourself a little rock from side to side. Bring your hands, arms in between your legs and give yourself a rock here. Happy baby. Press those legs straight up in the air, palms down by your side. Flex your feet, roll your shoulders back. Bring your legs right over your hips, so you actually start to feel your abs engage. If they're too far lifted, your abs relax. See if you bring them here. Press the right foot to the floor, and bring it back up. Press the left foot to the floor, and bring it back up. Bend the knees, place the feet on the floor. Lift up into a bridge. Take a deep breath there. And release that down. Extend your legs, adjust yourself on your mat. Palms turn up, close your eyes. Let it go. Take an inhale and exhale. And release into your relaxation, into your savasana. Just as before, drawing in energy, relaxation, positivity, exhaling stress, tension, negativity. If any thoughts wander into your mind, exhale and just let them go.
and then taking a deep breath, feeling your ribs expand, feeling your abdomen expand. Slowly letting it go. Breathing in all the way down, imagining breathing to fingers and toes, reawakening them, rolling wrists and ankles. Letting your head roll gently from side to side. Take another deep breath again, feeling the ribs and the abdomen expand. And as you exhale, roll yourself over onto one side, pausing there for a moment. Take an inhale and let it go. And then when you're ready, pressing back up as we began class just under an hour ago, finding a seated position, sitting up nice and tall. Really make sure you relax those shoulders. If you want, if your shoulders need like a little bit of moving around, if they're tight at all, you can do what you need to do. If you want, you can inhale and hug them up to the ears and then let them go. Take a deep inhale as you extend the arms out and up. Once again, interlacing the fingers and bending side to side just as we started. And bringing the palms together, bringing your hands down to heart center. And pausing here, noticing your breath, noticing your body, noticing your mind. Being aware of any subtle changes from an hour ago. Without judgment, just awareness. Imagine the light and energy and positivity you created in this hour. First, feeding your own soul and then extending that light and that energy to all who need it right now. Spreading our circle of positivity to the far reaches of the universe. The light in me acknowledges and honors the light in you. Namaste.